Hello everyone, Dragon Goes to Japan here, uh, and today I wanted to take a little time out of my day to uh, one, thank everyone who's helping my channel and watching the videos of the places I visit. Um, I have a few projects for my channel uh, soon coming up for fun videos I want to make, but I need a little bit more time, so please bear with me and please keep watching. Um, Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the 10 things that I wish I would have known before I came here to Japan. And um, what I mean by that is when I first came to Japan, uh, I did a lot of research. I knew a, not, a lot about what to expect here. But at the same point, I wasn't sure what might happen. As in uh, money issues or am I going to be able to talk, communicate get along with people, um, things of that nature. Um, I did do a lot of research online before I came here. Uh, I did take a lot of advice from friends um, to look into certain things before I arrived here. But there's a lot of things that, uh, after being here for 10 months, that is not explained online very clearly or is not very common for where I live in some cases, but overall, a lot of things people overlook or don't tell you about, which is a real issue and a problem for me, and I feel for a lot of people coming to Japan, it can be a very huge issue for us to get adjusted as well as get accustomed to living here, um, especially if you're from the United States or maybe any other Western country when it comes to like various things like bills or money or maybe getting around transportation-wise, things of that nature. So I wanted to kind of talk about the 10 things that uh, I found that were very hard to get used to here um, and that I feel that people need a little bit more information about that uh, I wasn't given, preferably, upon arriving, and there's not a lot of insight into it online. Uh, so the 10 things I'm going to talk about are uh, money, paying bills, uh, Japanese, uh, using a phone here, culture here, shopping, transportation, relationships, personality, and then sports. So I want to start off by talking about money for starters. So money here in Japan is very different than it is in any country. Uh, the Japanese use the yen, which is uh, a lot different for me because the denomination values are so much higher. So for example, uh, a $10 bill in America is a sen yen or one thousand dollar bill here in japan so um it's not a big difference it's adding a few more zeros um but that's not the hardest issue i found when it comes to surviving here money wise um for me it is the coin currency here that drives me a little crazy but at first uh, i think that's why i spent a lot of money unnecessarily here and what I mean by that is, in America, we don't use coins as a big form of currency. We have dollar coins, um, but we don't use them. And here, they're like a staple, a staple currency here in Japan. And what I mean by that is, there's a 100 yen coin that's about this big. Let me see. About this big. And that is a dollar coin. And they are used all the time by everybody. Now, I'm from America, so I'm used to using a $1 bill. So if you could imagine walking around with 25 of those or even 10 of those in your pocket, you're going to jingle a little bit. It's going to be a little heavier. Uh, the other thing is the 500 yen coin, which is about this big, about the size of a quarter, a little bit bigger, a little heavier. Um, but that's a $5 coin, and those you can spend very, very easy in the kind of fill up your pocket and the issue with me with using those kind of coins the biggest issue I found is that I have a change is a burden mentality still from living in America uh, I've lived in America my whole life so when I came to Japan I didn't look at coins as having a real kind of solid value they're more of a pain to keep in my pocket I'm a paper money person so Getting used to that kind of coin currency as being a huge base is a lot harder, I think, for me because of the fact that I don't um, use coins in that kind of way in America. I just use quarters. Everything else isn't very important. So um, 
I look at that was a big issue here for me that I wish breaking that mentality I would have started earlier so I wouldn't have spent as much money. So that's a big issue when it comes to money here in Japan. Um, paying bills here is really very simple. Um, overall, you get a bill once a month. Uh, I actually have one right here. Um, I'll kind of show what I can of it because I don't know how it really works. But this is kind of about what it looks like. Um, this one actually I believe is my water bill. Um, they send it to you every every month. You get one from whatever company. So if it's your internet, your electricity, your heating bill, whatever it is, they all send you a bill here, no problem. No questions asked. And they expect you to pay every month, no questions asked. So um, in response to that, I've discovered that it's very easy to pay bills, but the weird thing is, is you don't pay them conventionally like you would in say America, Great Britain, or even I would say any westernized nations where it's like you, they take it out of your account every month or out of your paycheck, that kind of nature thing. Here, um, you go to the convenience store <laughs> and pay your bills. Uh, so you go to a 7-Eleven or a Lawson here or a Sunkus or any of those kind of stores and you pay your bills here, which is very easy to do. But um, I've had an issue here that uh, I don't think many people have had. I've had it on one occasion where I paid my bill and they have stamped my bill. So as you pay your bill, they take a little stamper and go and they stamp your bill. It says you've been you paid it, they put it in the computer, they keep the receipt to turn to the company. Well I paid a bill here and sadly enough it didn't make it through and I had to pay again. Or I had to try and find it so they would leave it alone. Um, this has only happened to me one time here, but as a result, I had my power shut off because of it, which was a very big pain in the ass, with me not paying one other bill because I didn't, fi I couldn't find it. So, um, paying bills here can be a, a little bit of an issue here, uh, a little bit of a pain, but uh, one bill here that I tell everyone, I warn everyone about more, is there is an NHK bill, which is the... TV comp the TV broadcasting company of Japan that comes to your door and tries to get you to sign up for their services, which you don't have to do. Uh, they have a piece of paper that states you need to do this. You don't have to do it. Um, just for people out there who have encountered this issue, um, I've been told by other people, don't just shoo them away. Um, that's the best advice I can give when it comes to that because I got suckered. And I'm trying to clear it up right now, so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so try to avoid that at all costs. But overall, paying bills is actually very simple here. Um, but when you pay with money, or um, most everything's paid with money over a card. Uh, this is more of a still a cash-based society. So there's credit cards, but it's a little more rare than uh, other countries. So mostly cash all the time, which can be a very big issue for you if you only have so much money for the month and it's all in your wallet. So it can be a little hard. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is uh, the phone here in Japan. Now there's three major companies here in Japan. Uh, we have Docomo, uh, SoftBank, and AU. And those are the three primary um, phone companies here in Japan. Um, they're very large. They, they cover all of Japan. Uh, virtually all of Japan. Some areas it's still very hard. Um, but this question, I had my own trouble here. I'm like, okay, I need to buy a new phone. You know, what should I do? Should I buy the new phone? And it's going to cost me such and such a month for a new phone when I already have a phone. And all this other nonsense I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, okay. So I asked a friend, a colleague of mine, I said, all right, you know, you went to the States, you came back, what did you do? He said, oh yeah, I just got a SIM card. I was like, a SIM card? Um, he's like, yeah, you just pop the SIM card out, put in the one from the, the Japanese store, and then it runs perfectly. And it is amazing, it really does. And it's a lot more affordable than buying a new phone with a plan. Um, a new plan and a new phone here runs about uh, 20,000 yen, so a little, little over $200 only a month, um, which doesn't sound that bad, but when you're paid once a month, and your salary is not a huge salary, that's a lot of money every month. 
So that can be a little bit of an issue here um, that you have to watch out for. But when it comes to phones, SIM cards are a better option. Uh, I feel after my experience here in Japan, um, it's more affordable, it's cheaper. All you have to do is pop up the side of your phone. Uh, most smartphones, like uh, I use an actual iPhone 6 actually, and I love my 6. Uh, I need a 7 really bad, will be my next upgrade. But it's very simple to just pop up the card, put in the new card, shut it off, turn it back on, reboots, no problem. Um, so it's a lot more affordable than trying to buy a new phone. Unless your phone is in need of an upgrade, then yes, I would recommend doing that. Otherwise, I wouldn't advise it. I would use a SIM card. So, um, my fourth fun thing to talk about today, let me see, fourth fun thing to talk about is Japanese. Um, when I left here, uh, sorry, when I left for Japan, I had very little knowledge of Japanese language and how to speak correctly and anything else to the matter. So, um, I did a little bit of research. I spoke a little bit on uh, to a friend through Skype, and I also did a little bit of work when it came to uh, buying a cheap book for me to study, which is Japanese for Dummies, which I've discovered is a complete and utter waste of time right now um, compared to the book I've switched over to here. Um, but Japanese is really critical if you plan on coming here through any kind of program, the JET program, the Interact program, coming here as a Ikaiwa teacher or any other kind of teacher here um, having some knowledge of Japanese is extremely critical to survive here uh, especially since English is very very hard for Japanese and it's not spoken everywhere but there is a positive side that it, uh, there are many different sites on YouTube that help with basic grammar and English structure um, I recommend a book called Genki. I'm going to try and put the description right here in the link for this video. Um, and all Genki is is a introductionary, in a college introduction course into Japanese. Now, you're going to probably think, oh, it's you know really hard to understand and everything else. It's really not. It's really probably the best book for learning Japanese. Um, most people that come here use this book. It's a college grade textbook. It's ordered. It has Japanese and English, so it's very easy to understand, and it goes along very well. It comes with a CD, a listening guide, and it's very, very helpful for anyone coming to Japan. I highly, highly recommend using this book. Um, there's other avenues you can do. There's Hello Talkie. There's other things. Uh, I've learned a lot from other YouTubers here that have helped me by watching videos about certain things that they've done that have helped me speak and get to know people on a a little bit more of a personalized level so but learning Japanese is very critical if you plan on coming here or staying here long term and I mean long term is in anywhere between three and five years you need to speak some kind of Japanese uh, I've been here about 11 months now I speak a little bit but I understand a lot more now because I always can pick up on a few words here and there so it's kind of different um, the fifth thing I want to talk about is pretty much the culture here in Japan. It's a lot different than other countries. Uh, it's pretty similar to, from what I understand, it's China, China's culture. But that's not necessarily the truth either because it's not 100% the same. Uh, the biggest difference between China and Japan for uh, culture is the amount of drinking I think they do. And this is the big focus of what I've learned for Japanese culture is you're always drinking and I mean always is in you're going out once or twice a week and you're drinking whether you want to or not with co-workers it's almost obligated so your your actual obligation for your job is actually to spend money if you don't already get make enough money so it's really 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 bad uh, the only probably really negative thing I've found about Japanese culture so far is the fact that when you are part of a company or business and you go out drinking with them, you're required to always go out with them if there's a party or someone new comes. And it's it's kind of a nightmare because if you don't get along with staff or say you don't really care to go out, it's really hard because most places are really cheap at maybe 
twenty to thirty dollars, so two thousand to three thousand yen. But that's not always the case, and sometimes it could be even you know four thousand yen or forty dollars for a couple hours, which is very cheap. But since you're on a limited budget anyway, when you only get paid once a month, it's really, really, really hard. So you can't go out and do other things. You can't stretch your money a different way. It's you're losing money because of that. So it can be kind of an issue. It depends on how you might uh, micromanage your money and what you kind of go through. Um, number six I want to talk about is shopping. So shopping is a little different um, here in Japan. Um, for one, shopping here is done through all various ways. Uh, there's a lot of online shopping. But uh, I go to the store once a week. Uh, I go to a store called Sunny's, which is actually owned by Walmart. And uh, I don't know where Walmart is based out of right now, but Walmart owns Sunny's and a few other uh, store chains in Japan. So Walmart has their hand everywhere. Good job, Walmart. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to shopping, shopping is actually very um, affordable here. Uh, if you know what to buy and if you know how to plan a budget and that's probably the biggest thing I did not have any knowledge of before I came here is I didn't have kind of a budget because I was getting paid week to week so I always had money consecutively coming in. Um, budgeting has probably been one of the hardest things I've had to learn here in Japan because being paid once a month if you spend all your money by say the first to the second and you don't get paid till like the 28th you're in a lot of trouble. And I've been in a situation before when I first arrived here where I had about $20 to last me 14 days. Which you would say that's pretty good, but when you have no food in your fridge or your freezer, that's really, really, really hard. And I mean really hard as in if you don't eat a lot of Japanese food or you're not good at um, buying the right kind of food to save money and things of that nature, then it becomes very, very hard on your wallet. And it's really a pain. So that's one of the biggest things I can recommend to anyone who ever comes to Japan. Um, plan a budget um, in America. Start putting together what you plan on spending a month. Uh, and make sure you keep your budget very tight and rigorous. Because otherwise you won't save that much money here. So granted I'm a different kind of teacher here. I'm an Ikaiwa teacher versus an ALT or a JET program teacher. So we have to pay more to survive here so as a result if you aren't careful then you can easily burn yourself out of money and really 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 hate it here so that's kind of an issue I've I've noticed after being here um, number seven is transportation and this might seem like it's very common but there are so many ways to travel in Japan there's so many different um, ways to travel that it's kind of outrageous. Um, the biggest thing I can tell you about travel here in Japan is you have tru uh, taxis, buses, trains, all this stuff going on. The major issue when you travel by these methods, they're all various prices and it depends on where you're going. Um, buses are normally the most common to get around by and normally the most cheap and affordable. But depends on how far you're going. Uh, I just took a trip a few weeks, actually last weekend, to Nagasaki from Fukuoka City. And by bus, it was only about $25, $26. So um, when, I went, when I wanted to go by train, if you bought your ticket ahead of time, it was $23. And that means you have to go and buy it online through a card with some kind of Visa or MasterCard logo, something to that effect. Otherwise, it's $54 for a train ride. The bus, which took a long time and was probably not as comfortable as the train would have been. Uh, as a result, uh, from the experience of this, I learned that you have buses and trains that are very affordable here when it comes to transportation and getting around Japan effectively. Um, probably the oddest thing I found when it comes to travel for transportation is taxis are extremely extremely expensive and this is mostly my case because I live so far from where I have to take the taxi from where I go talk to people at night in Tenjin in Fukuoka 
I live in Manahama, which is about a $35 taxi ride home. So if you can imagine, a $35 taxi ride twice a month is about $70 just spent on a taxi to get home. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's not that fun. So, But that's okay. I recommend anyone coming to Japan, get a map. Talk to a tourist information. Most cities have a city ward with some kind of thing for bus schedules or something of that nature. Or find a translator on a computer to try and make it a little more easier. Uh, yeah, that would be the best way to do it. Unless you know someone who speaks enough English to help tell you where to go. Always it can be a little bit of a hardship to do. Alright, number eight is probably one of my favorites. And that's relationships. Um, and relationships I talk about mostly is not as in like boyfriend, girlfriend kind of relationships. I mean is like friends, coworkers, or maybe meeting people kind of relationships. Um, in Japan, people are a little different on how they act towards each other for relationships. Um, so like friends are like normally very social, casual people. Um, boyfriend, girlfriend are affectionate, but not in public, um, and the biggest thing about all of it, I can tell you, for relationships is it depends on who you are talking to, what age, what generation, and what kind of uh, habits you have. Um, this is only a brief video, and it's already almost 25 minutes long, it feels like. So um, the biggest thing about relationships is getting to know someone to know what you can do. Um, Japan isn't a very big touch culture. So like hugging and like handshakes and stuff are not as common. But if you know them very well and stuff like that, then it becomes a little bit more okay. Uh, I actually have a few friends in Parco uh, that I go talk to about every day. And unlike most people, they shake your hand, they do that kind of thing. And they're really, really nice people. So it's a little bit different kind of thing. So just for... Future advice, get to know people, have, build a social network, get to know bar owners, get to know foreigners in your area, because that will greatly help if you need to talk to someone or get around or anything of the nature of, okay, this is what I need to accomplish slowly. Um, the biggest thing is for social networking is just having someone to talk to. Um, Japan can be a very isolating and lonely place if you're a foreigner with no one to talk to. Uh, that is a big reason why many, many, many foreigners leave Japan. This isn't uh, an uncommon fact. This is a very highly known fact. But as a result, Japanese people know this. So they know that once these people are sent there, if they don't survive there after three months, then they know it's a really bad area. They got to find a way to try and in integrate and change where they got people at because many foreigners leave here after about three months of being isolated from the whole chunk of civilization for them of speaking and talking to someone without any Japanese. So that is a big, big issue here in Japan. Um, number nine is a fun one because it's personalities. So personality is a huge, huge thing here in Japan. When I mean personality is that if you're outgoing, fun, talkative, you like to be casual when you go out, you know, socialize, you don't kind of look down at the ground and look like you're scared and you, you look like a very confident individual being a very fun funny outgoing kind of person uh, will get you a lot farther in Japan than it would be maybe in a different country because foreigners are looked at as being very um, outgoing fun people and some of them that come here are not like that so it's a little harder on them so it gives some of us a bad name sometimes so personality, the biggest thing is, is you need to have a very positive energy feel, um, have a good time, be fun, outgoing, um, don't be afraid to talk to people because that's actually very good. Confidence is probably the biggest thing that I've talked with my coworkers and colleagues about is having confidence goes a long, long, long way here in Japan and it's very, very critical to have confidence. So... It is a personal must that you have a good personality to come here. Otherwise, you will be very, very miserable. 
And I hate for people to hear that, but you must be outgoing and have a good time. If you're an uptight, really serious person all the time, you will hate Japan because it, you'll stay in, you'll say, oh, I can't communicate, I can't talk. A negative personality will not survive very long here. I work with no one of that nature currently, but I know people that say, oh, I have someone like that in my office. I'm like, well, that sounds terrible. <laughs> so don't do that. Uh, number 10, I think is a little bit out there but a lot of people don't understand is sports here in japan is different of course because it's an asian country but common sports that we enjoy in like western nations like basketball and american football and those kind of sports are not as common or practiced as much here uh sumo is the national sport of japan um currently and is watched by almost all japanese people but the big sports that Japanese play are, is, if you're rich, you play golf. Uh, otherwise, you play badminton, tennis, volleyball, um, baseball. Those kind of sports are very, very popular and common here. Uh, a lot, a lot, and a lot of Japanese. And I mean this literally as in this many Japanese I meet uh, always say I play badminton. Um which to me doesn't seem like a very fun sport, but I think it's because it's low impact, it doesn't really hurt, so it's very common and popular here in Japan. Um, but just make sure that when you come here, if you want to play a certain sport, try to get a hold of a social network online, something that does a sport that you like, so you can play, practice, whatever you want to do, can be a little bit more focused on what you want to participate in. So. I do recommend trying to play sports here. It makes life a little easier. Uh, I have not had that success yet because of when I work and my schedule, but I'd like to find a place to play basketball, uh, maybe in a few other times or other locations we can find. But in my city currently, there's only one place, and it's very, very expensive to go play for two hours. So I'm we're kind of against it at the moment. So you'll have to look into where you're going to see what you have available to them. So, uh, But those are the 10 things uh, that I wish I would have known about more before I came to Japan. And then kind of information for people that are coming here or people that are, that are curious about Japan. Like These things looked into, investigate more. Um, just so anyone knows, I also have just written a book, actually, about the 10 things I wish I knew when I came to Japan. So that's kind of why I'm making the video to give a little bit of a preview of my book. The link will be in the description in the comment section below um, if you want to check it out. It's an e-reader on Kindle um, through the Amazon Shopping Network. Uh, it's about 26 pages long. It's not covering everything that you need to know, but it gives you a lot more detail about what's in Japan, what I've experienced, what others have experienced, this is what I've learned, this is what I've heard. These kind of mentality things uh, are greatly underlooked when coming here and they should be addressed more often. So please take the time, watch the video. If you feel the information is important, try and read the book. Uh, it's not very long, but it gives a lot of basic information and details, especially for new people coming here to kind of mentally prepare for what they're in for because... I thought I was prepared when I came here. I wasn't. So that's why I wrote the book because some people need to know these things to make their life a little easier with the transition period. So thanks again, everyone. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all hopefully in the next video.